Today we are very honored to have um, a special speaker with us. Uh, his name is Chris O'Dell. Chris and Jamie and their four boys are from Taiwan. Uh, they have been serving faithfully in Taiwan for the last 16, well, I shouldn't, well, Okay, since 2008, but I know you're gonna you're gonna talk about it as well. But you know, I'm so happy. I met Chris a couple years ago in Tampa. I've always heard about the Odells um, because they run a coffee shop and a church through Envision. Um, and you know, but the thing is, it's like I'm like, oh, he's never been to our church, and I was like a little. FOMO, you know, because I know he went to another local church, and I'm like, why didn't you come to our San Jose church? Why didn't you come to, you know, New Vine? And so, um, so we're so glad that Chris and his family are here with us today. They're going to be with us the whole week. Um, he's actually going to be speaking. He's speaking at New Vine today. He spoke in our San Jose church this morning. He's going to be speaking at a, a local church in Newark, and then the next week he's going to be in San Mateo. So he's going to have the whole Bay Area covered in the next few weeks. But I'm not going to say anything more, but we are just so happy to have Chris uh, with us. His family is resting because it's a long day, but let's welcome Chris O'Dell as he shares the word of God with us. And Vine Kids, you are dismissed, all right? Thank you. All right, kids. Just a warning to all of you that um, this is your chance to sneak out with the kids, okay? When I came and I said, uh, Pastor Douglas, what is what is the cutoff time for the end of the service today? He said, oh, at New Vine, we're just so flexible. We just, we just go on. And I said, you really, you really need to put a cap on that because, you know, sometimes I've been at some of those churches where they go for a couple of hours. So, but I, I was told that eventually there is a time when we end today. So we'll try to stick within that. Um, these are not lost and found keys, right? These are someone's keys. They could be mine. They've got an Apple tag on them. Someone's missing them. Come find your keys later today. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. It is a pleasure and honor for me uh, to be able to be here with you. Yes, I've never been able to come to San Jose Alliance Church and be able to share with you guys and to be at the New Vine campus today is just so awesome. It's so encouraging. And as we got started here today in our musical worship time, I just sense there's like a really special a really special vibe. That's what the kids say, right? A really special something going on here. Uh, just, I think it's, I think it's the presence of God. I think that he's just here with us. And so I'm just so thankful. It was, it was refreshing for me to be able to just come and, and uh, dive right into it with you. So thank you for creating that space, for holding that space for, for the Lord to be able to be here today. And, and that's one of my favorite things actually, is just to get into that space of, of worship. And it can be with music. It doesn't always have to be, you know, the, the word worship often just means like bowing down or, or serving or, or, or giving up your and, and, and just trusting wholeheartedly in him. And that happens often through music, but happens in other ways too. And so I think it's just so special to be able to be in a place. I don't know if you've been here for a while or I met someone else who it's their first day today like me as well, but just celebrate that you're in a special place here today. And whether it's out there with the kids or whether it's in here, and if you're going to help with the, child, uh, with the VBS coming up later at the end of this month or however it is that you participate in his kingdom, I'm just so thankful. And it's really, really special to be able to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation, for, for the privilege to be able to be here. And I, I can sense that it's such a special thing because when... <clears throat> When people get into the presence of God, you can think about the, the book of Isaiah, you know, the Old Testament prophet. What happens for him at the beginning of that time, he's in the temple and he sees the beauty and the glory and the power of God. And as God shows up in that place, then God just asks a simple question. Hey, I need somebody to go for me. Who's going to go? And Isaiah couldn't help but respond. You know, the auto response when you're in the presence of God is yes. That's the response when you're in there with him. And so it's just such a beautiful space to be able to be here and to give your yes to him in that musical time and to give your yes to him, not just tonight uh, until 5.30 when we end, but, but tomorrow and, and next week and the week after that. And that's why I'm so excited today to be able to share with you about going now to the harvest. Amen. And so that's, uh, that's our theme for today. It's like, hey, let's go to the harvest. 
And I want to just celebrate also that this is not a boring fall asleep church. I can just already feel the vibes. You know, I can just already feel it like, hey, you guys can be so interactive and I love that, okay? I love it. Uh, in fact, in, in Aroma Church where I'm from in Taiwan, we actually have something called Learning Buddies where we encourage you partway through the service to just ask a question and you actually have to talk with the person next to you about that question and then everybody starts talking and I can't get them to stop talking and then I say, hey, come back, come back, come back. And then we share, you know, kind of in the community, what are some things that you answered as a part of that question to actually have just an interactive time together. So I really, really love the interactive time and I, and I welcome you to give any feedback. Uh, if it's really, really negative, you can save that for Pastor Douglas at the end. He'd love to field all your negative comments. Uh, but if there's anything, you know, that God is just putting on your heart and you just want to shout that out or you want to just stay connected and engaged, that would be really awesome. As, as we mentioned earlier, my wife and I, we've been living in Taiwan uh, for a while now. My wife, Jamie, and I actually moved to Taiwan. Let's go to the next slide, please. My wife and I actually moved to Taiwan in 2008. And I sometimes tell people that it was kind of an accident because originally I was supposed to go to the, a country called Thailand <laughs> in 2006 on a trip. And uh, I signed up for Thailand and the leader of the Thailand mission trip team at my college actually said, hey, I want you to be on my team. So when the leader asks you, right, you're going and you're, you're already, you don't even need to apply. Uh, but apparently they asked you to fill out three options. And so I looked around the room and uh, I saw one of the other booths said Taiwan. I just wrote that down. And, uh, and then I, a couple weeks later, I got the congratulations invitation letter in my mailbox and I opened it up. And I read, congratulations, you're going to Taiwan. And I thought, like most ignorant people in America, that Thailand and Taiwan are pretty much the same thing. So, but I knew that I knew better. Okay, so I said, hey, listen, I know that they just spelt Thailand wrong. So I took the piece of paper to the office and I said, hey, uh, you guys, I'm supposed to go to Thailand. Like we already talked about this, me and the leader, we know what's going on, but I need you to just write me another letter. Okay, just write me a letter that says Thai, Thailand on it, not Taiwan. So I took the letter and I, and I went to the office and, and the leader there, he said, actually, we, we spent a whole weekend praying about this. And, uh, and at the end of the weekend, we decided we felt like God was leading you to be on the Taiwan team. So now I have this dilemma, you know, because the, all the team leaders, they got together, they had a secret leader party and they got together and they prayed and they decided I was supposed to go to Taiwan. And who's going to say no to all that, right? So I said yes to Taiwan and, uh, and I went to Taiwan by accident. And a year previous to that, uh, this other lady named Jamie, uh, who's another classmate of mine at school, she was supposed to go to Turkey. And they switched it on her too, but a different switch. It's because there were some political issues there. And so they decided that it wasn't going to be good for the team to go. It might cause some issues with the local believers there on the ground. So they didn't go. And she got rerouted to Taiwan. So she led a team to Taiwan in 2005. And then again in 2006, and I was on her team. And the last night we're in the hotel room. I'm looking up at, this, up at the ceiling with my other male roommates. And, we're, and I just said, you know, I think I, think I might like Jamie. And they're like, what? That's weird because you've known her for two years and nothing. And now all of a sudden, and I was like, I don't know. So I spent two, because you know, when you go on a mission trip, there's like a lot of emotions and there's a lot of like, whoa, the Lord is moving, you know, and you see things differently. Your eyes are open. And so I thought we got to let the jet engines cool down a little bit. I'll let everything just relax. So I went back. I spent two months just thinking, praying and asking for godly wisdom. And then, and then I asked Jamie to be my girlfriend. And then we started dating and we got married a year later. And then we we're like, what are we going to do after we go to, to, to after we graduate? And this is 2000, 2008 in the spring. And we got a phone call from the National Office of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. They said, hey, we want to uh, ask you and your wife to move out to Taiwan and we want to start this site. Now, I don't tell a lot of people this, but basically the Alliance was trying to copy this other mission organization called YWAM. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Youth with a Mission. Okay, passionate, amazing people. And they have these sites where you can go and you can do like a short term, like an internship, or you can go on a team and you can go there. So we're like, hey, we need our own, you know, like Alliance YWAM. So we set up and they said, we got the phone call and they said, move to Taiwan, except the trick is that we only have enough money for your plane tickets one way and, uh, and three months of rent. And then, uh, after that, you pretty much have to figure it out on your own. So we moved to Taiwan two weeks after we graduated from university with one-way plane tickets. And our goal was to get jobs teaching English, learn some Chinese, and then start hosting teams and interns and eventually do some kind of ministry there. So that happened. Uh, two weeks after graduation, we flew one way to Taipei. We'd been there before, but never lived there before. And um, 
We've been there ever since. So it's pretty fun. And, and we got jobs teaching and we started learning a little bit of Mandarin. And so we started reaching out to people and using English to reach out to them. And eventually there were too many people meeting in our apartment and the neighbors were yelling like, you're using the elevator too much and you're too loud when you sing worship. So I totally understand and loved this earlier. That was really good. But we're like, hey, we need to move outside of, of this space. But most of our friends were not Christians. They didn't really know Jesus. They didn't know definitely what tithing is and didn't care about that. And then, and even if they did, they were like 20 years old. So they don't have any money, right? And, and so we thought, okay, what can we do? And we prayed about it. And we felt like God was leading us to start a coffee shop that could be a way for us to kind of sustain some of the rent costs, but then also be able to meet a lot of people. And who doesn't like to drink coffee, right? So I thought if I can open a coffee shop, Maybe I can get some employee discounts and we can also have just a good time together and meeting people and and hopefully helping to expand the ministry. So we started that in 2012. And then in 2022, we moved to a different location about 10, 15 minutes down the street uh, to be able to have a little bit more space for our church services and also to add classroom space so that we could reach people with with English and other kinds of classes to reach them more. And that's kind of where we're at now. And so We've been in Taiwan for a a period of time. I moved in 2008 and I'm looking for people that are good at math or remember what Pastor Douglas said. Uh, Let's go to the next slide. On here, I need your interaction. This is interaction point number one. Take out your phone, scan the QR code. Probably some of you already have your phone out because I'm boring. Scan the QR code. Send me an email, chris at thearoma.tw or Instagram, Odell CS. Answer the question, how long have we been in Taiwan? Seven and a half years, 16 years, or I'm looking really good for my age and I should start like a makeup business. We've been in Taiwan 100 years. Your choice. A, B, or C, just send me a quick email because I wanna keep in touch with you, get you on our newsletter so you can hear more about what's going on in Taiwan. But I also want to send you a free copy of a book that I wrote a couple of years ago. It's called From Within the Burning Bush. And it's the story of Moses and kind of integrated in in the story of, of our life in Taiwan. But it's meant to be a space for you to, experience and and learn how to host the presence of God. And so there's actually nine different things I talk about, different spaces for us to engage with God's presence. And you might be someone uh, who's like a a mom and taking care of kids. There's stuff about it in there. You might be someone who cooks. My QR code stopped working. Darn you, bit.ly free version. I should pay for the upgraded version next time. I tell you. Okay. All of you wonderful people, can you do me the extra hard step of just opening your email client, typing chris at thearoma.tw, and then sending your answer via email? That would be the best. I apologize for the the issue with my QR code. That's why probably nobody responded this morning. (laughs) Whoops. Okay. Well, lesson, lesson learned. Okay. Thank you, interactive people. And I also appreciate whoever said it's not working because that's an honest friend. Thank you. Honest friend. I appreciate that. Yeah. Taiwan Jiayou. All right. Okay. 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 <laughs> Seven and a half, 16 or 100 email or Instagram. You can send me a direct message because I want to send you a copy of that book and I have it in English, but I also have it in Mandarin with traditional characters. So if you prefer to read the book in Mandarin, or if you prefer to read the book in English, I'm going to send you one of each and you can choose. But the point of this book is for us to engage God's presence. And what I sense here in this group is Like we're people that are hungry for that. So I'm not just giving this away as like, oh, you know, like a gift. Like I think there's something really special to this. And that's why I took the time to to write that book and want to share it with you. It's a very thin, short book. So I'll just send you a digital copy of that. And then we can stay in touch after that. Okay, so please take your best guess. It might be seven and a half years or 16 years or 100 years. You choose, okay? I don't know. Just choose one. Whatever you think it might be, that's great. We're going to keep going because I want to share a little bit more about our mission and our vision and our strategy, how we want to do this. So we, we call our coffee shop the aroma. And the aroma comes from that verse in 2 Corinthians where Paul says, we are, we, all of you and myself, we are the aroma of God, aroma of Christ to God, first up to him. So it's first about your relationship with God. We are the aroma to God. And that's why this worship is so important being a sacrifice to him. And we are the aroma among those who are perishing, who don't know Jesus yet, and those who are being saved. So your life, your life is an example of Jesus to everyone who you interact with. Whether you go to school or to work, whether you're home with kids, 
when you go out on the street at the gas station, you are the aroma of Christ. And for some people, you might be the only person that they interact with who is the aroma of Christ. And what a special honor, what a special privilege it is for you to be the one who engages someone as the aroma. So our goal, our hope is to engage people, to help them to smell, become, and spread the aroma of Christ. And we have this big dream for the last couple of years. We've been saying, hey, God, what would it be like for us to be able to share the gospel as a ministry with 100,000 people in Taiwan and beyond? That's a number that's kind of way beyond me. I don't know how to do that. My wife, she's amazing. She can handle four boys. And I don't think she can do it on her own either. But we want to we wanna reach those people. And we believe that it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an invitation that God has given us to partner with him and to do things that are beyond what, what we can do ourselves to train and equip 10,000 people and then to send out 1,000 people to go and to spread the aroma. And we do that, as we mentioned, through our coffee shop and our church. And we're starting this education center where we can meet more people through English and other classes. And then through hosting teams and interns. Maybe someday we could get some of you out there. You can do two weeks to two years and anything in between. But like I said, it's not possible for us to do it on our own. And so we need... We need people. And on the next slide, you'll see our team. This is our team of teams. We have our church team and our business team and our our Envision team. We have interns that join us. We have teams that join us from the States and from other countries. But there's this question mark, and it's probably too small. The writing might be too small for you to see it. So on the next slide, I I made it bigger, okay? You You are the question mark teammate because you are the aroma And God is inviting you to participate, to spread the aroma of Christ here and to the ends of the earth. Here and as you're going to the ends of the earth. It's important that you remember that. This QR code is probably not going to work either because it's the same one. (laughs) That's what you get for copying the same QR code. But it's our invitation for us to say our yes to God like Isaiah in the temple, like Daniel when he was taken captive and brought under King Nebuchadnezzar's rule and he had the choice, be brainwashed and become like everybody else or resolve, Daniel chapter one, verse eight, to do it differently, to do it God's way. And Joseph, thrown in prison, sold into slavery by his his own brothers. He had a choice. What am I going to do with this choice? We all have a choice And how we respond to God in that choice, in that moment, how we respond to God shows our character and gives us the opportunity that we have to go now to the harvest. So I want to invite you today to imagine with me what it would be like if Jesus showed up and shared one of his stories with you. I want to read this parable, but I want you to imagine as I read this parable from Mark chapter 4, verses 26 through 29, I want you to imagine what it would be like if you were face to face with Jesus. In Exodus 33, it says Moses made this tent of meeting and he would go into the tent. It says he would talk to God face to face like a friend. Some, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but some Hebrew scholars say that that meant mouth to mouth, like so close, so intimate with God. And that God wanted that kind of intimate closeness Some of us in this world are seeking so much to know and to be close and to to be known and to be loved. And God desires to do that for each of us. But Jesus is coming right now and he wants to set up right across from you, knee to knee, like the Chinese idiom says. He wants to talk with you face to face like a friend and have this close, intimate conversation with you about this. Here's what Jesus would say if he sat down. Friend, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts, grows, though, it does, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. And as soon as the grain is ripe, he puts a sickle to it because the harvest has come. Jesus sitting with us face to face right now shares this simple story and invites us to explore what this story might mean. And he tells the stories because he wants each of us to understand what it's like in the kingdom of God. He tells simple stories so that those of us who have ears to hear, who have hearts that are open, we will hear what he's saying to us. We will see what he's doing in our midst. So my question is tonight, who 
has eyes to see, who has ears to hear, who's open to what God might be saying to you today. Jesus, face to face with you right now, he says, this is what the kingdom of God is like. And there's three things that come to my mind as I imagine this intimate conversation with Jesus. He says, there's a sower that goes out. And his first thought for us today is that we are people who sow abundantly. We're people who sow abundantly. Now, this is the picture in my mind as I think about being a a sower. I'm not a farmer, so I I don't get this stuff very well. But I imagine that if I was in charge of sowing seed, I would take one beautiful, perfect, amazing seed, and I would walk out to that dirt, and I would talk to that seed. Seed, you are such a beautiful seed. I love you so much, seed. You're so beautiful. And I would plant, I would carefully, so carefully, put that perfect little seed right in the ground. I would cover up that seed and I would rub him and I would pat him and I would water him. I'd say, seed, please grow me some good food. I want some vegetables. I want some fruit, a little grain. And if you're feeling lucky, Mr. Seed, could you please grow me a cow? Because I like hamburgers. (laughs) Now that's one seed in the ground. Probably not going to get four different things from one seed. And the fact is that some of the seeds they don't actually end up sprouting. They're not in the right soil. They're not, you'd read the parable earlier in the beginning of Mark chapter four. He says, when they scatter the seed, sometimes it goes on the sidewalk and sometimes it goes amongst the weeds and sometimes it goes in the sand. And none of those places are fruitful because the soil is not ready. It's not the seed's fault, but the soil is not ready. But he says, for the soil that is ready, when there's a heart that's ready to receive that seed, it will bear 30, 60, 100 fold. And so my picture of the sower is so off base, so wrong, because the sower doesn't just take one little seed and hope that he can get four different kinds of fruit from it. No way. The sower takes a bag of seed. The sower takes a bag of seed and God has given each of you a a, a bag of seed. And I I just want you to to think about this. You're knee to knee with Jesus right now. You're face to face with him. And Jesus is running a movie theater through your head. And he's reminding you in the past of some of these stories. I read a book recently where he called it the cookie jar. He said, you have a cookie jar full of memories of things, of times when amazing things have happened in your life. And for us as believers, it's a cookie jar full of all of the encounters that we've had with God. The times when we've experienced his miraculous work in our life. The time when you first heard the message of Jesus. Imagine that. The time when you decided to give your life to him. Maybe it was when you got baptized. Maybe it was the first time you tried to share about Jesus with someone. Or you had an encounter with him as you opened up this Bible and you were reading it. Maybe it's a certain worship song. I can remember places that I was at from when I was a little boy all the way up through high school, even though I ran away from him for a time. I remember I've got a cookie jar full of those experiences and reminders. And so Jesus is saying, take those experiences, those seeds, take those seeds and plant them. Take those seeds and sow them. Take the, take the seed of the word of God. I, I, we do a bad job in my generation. I'm a millennial. I'm 38 years old. And I think it's probably even worse as we get younger. But when I was a kid, I had to memorize passage. I had to memorize whole sentences, even whole verses of the Bible. I don't know if we do that much today. I was in a WANA program. I don't know if anybody, you don't have to date yourself. If you know what Awana is, you're probably super old. But I was in Awana and I memorized Bible verses. I'm so thankful because now that I have some of those verses memorized, they just come to mind. But you've got seeds. You've got verses that you've memorized. You've got places that you've gone, experiences that you've had that no one can take from you. It's a, it's a bag of seed that God has given you. And what are we going to do with that seed? We don't hide it. We don't keep it because that seed, if you keep it to yourself, it's never going to grow any more fruit. It's good for you. You can eat that and enjoy it. And, and in Corinthians, Paul even says some of the seed goes for eating and some of the seed goes, goes for planting. And we need to discern when it is to plant and when it is to eat, but that's a different message. Back to this one is you've got a bag of seed and God is saying, what are you going to do with that seed? Don't be like Chris and just put one in the ground. You got to go and you got to spread that seed out. You got to take that bag of seed and you throw it out everywhere you go. It's just, it's just when you're at the gas station, amen, hallelujah. And you can become one of those people at the gas station. And, and when you go to work and when you go to school, and it doesn't mean that you have to be like super weird. You can, but, 
But you go and you share. Hey, nobody can take that story from you. That story that you and God have, that's just, as, the, as they call it today outside of the church, that's just your truth, okay? You have your truth that no one can take from you. It also just happens to be united into the truth, which objectively is 100% real and never changing, and it's Jesus. But you have your truth that is connected into the truth and also happens to be the way and the life. You got Jesus and you're connected to him and you've got this bag of seed and you sow it abundantly. We're people that are called to sow abundantly. Let me share with you a quick story. On the next slide, you see my friend Max. And Max, uh, he had gone to church a few years ago, a different church from ours, and then he got called away. He's a young Taiwanese guy, and he got called away to uh, a business, and he worked in China for about five years on some business stuff. And he came back to Taiwan a couple of months ago. He's looking for, for people to be in community with. Not that interested in Jesus, but he ends up searching a website that we advertise on called AccuPass. He got on this website and he found this event called SoundFest. And he was interested in coming and, and seeing and checking this place out and listening to some artists. Well, that SoundFest is our music night that we host in our cafe. So he shows up that night and he hears the great music. And then at the end of the night, we stand up and one of the announcements is, hey, tomorrow morning, there's going to be church here. It's a coffee shop, but there's also a church. And Max said, I think I'm going to go. So the next morning, Max shows up, and Max hasn't been in church for years. And he's never, he's, he's never accepted Jesus. In fact, later I was talking with him, and he said, he said, my whole family is Buddhist, and I'm not a Christian, but I'm curious. That's enough. That's enough. He's curious. That's enough to get him started. And so Max and I, we've been texting back and forth. He just left a five-star review on our, on our Google Maps this morning, so that's cool. He's still going, I think. That sounds good. And, uh, and Max is hearing, he's, the seeds are being sown. He's hearing the message, the good news of Jesus, and it's all because we had this event. It's all because we had this opportunity, and I wonder, what would it be like if maybe that day he had found another music night? What if we hadn't been there? What if we didn't have Sound Fest? Ah, oh, we would have missed that chance. But because we were there, right in that moment, right in that space, we went now to the harvest. We went now to that space and we got to meet Max and now we're sharing the gospel with him. So who in your life is one of those now to the harvest people? Somebody that only you're going to meet. And of course, God can arrange it another way. But He's put you where you're at for such a time as this. For, for that, like you're in that exact place. And I love thinking about how many of us feel like we're kind of trapped in our jobs, trapped in our school, maybe even trapped in your family. It's like, I can't wait to, to graduate and get out of here. Whatever it is, you might feel like you're kind of stuck. The good news is God works in stuck. Amazing. Daniel's story is 100% stuck. He's a dang slave in another country. You're probably not a slave in this country. If you are, let's talk after the service. But if you're, if you're not a slave, like you're already, you've got more opportunity, more freedom than Daniel had. And what did he do? Oh, nothing. He just changed an entire kingdom. Daniel did it. And Joseph, his own dang family sold him into slavery. You might want to move a row back. I spit. I apologize. <laughs> his own family sold him into slavery. And what did he do? I don't know. Just change the history of an entire nation and save a bunch of people from famine. That's a big deal. And how did they do it? They did it with God because the seeds had been sown. And you are there in whatever space you're trapped in, in whatever situation you're stuck in. Make, an, make yourself understand that this is an opportunity that God has given to you. It's so beautiful. We can sow abundantly and nobody can stop us. We can sow abundantly. You can throw those seeds out everywhere you go. God is so good. He's giving you opportunity right here, right now, in every situation that you're in. But it doesn't stop there. Remember, we're knee to knee, face to face, mouth to mouth with Jesus. And he says, listen, a sower goes out and sows seed. And night and day, he goes to sleep and he gets up and he doesn't know what's going on. But somehow it's starting to grow. For this one, I was thinking about this and I thought, man, Jesus, this is so cool. Like you tell us to just wait expectantly. And for the Christian, for the believer, for the follower of Jesus, waiting expectantly is prayer. It's prayer. It's coming to him. We're called to be people who sow abundantly, but also called to be people that pray expectantly. We serve a God who hears our prayers. 
And we don't have to burn incense and sacrifice to do it because Jesus is the once for all sacrifice. And we are on the altar as a living sacrifice, giving our whole lives to him. And when you do that, wow, he's, he's right there. He says, the spirit intercedes for us with groanings that words can't even express. And God is here listening to your prayers. And he says, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Whoo! We can pray. You can pray. Amen. You can pray. Amen. And ah, oh, I just, I'm excited about that. But I also can tell, I know the difference between when we're praying and when we're not praying. I've experienced those prayerless seasons. I can tell the difference. And I know in this room, and maybe there's some people watching online, I don't know. But as we go through this, there are some of you, I know you're like those prayer warriors. And I just want to give you an encouragement this morning. My mom was like that. When I, before I was even born, my mom knew that I was going to go overseas. She didn't tell me, she didn't pressure me, but she knew and she prayed. And even when I ran away from God and did my own thing in middle school and high school, she kept praying. Faithfully, she kept praying with tears. She kept praying. And there are some of you who are praying, praying for kids, praying for family members, praying for coworkers, praying for classmates, praying for that stranger on the street that you drove by on the way here. And your prayers are being heard. And God promises that he'll respond to those prayers. And he's waiting. He's looking for people who are in this room, who are ready to be the people who step in the gap and God responds. We are people who pray expectantly. So let me tell you about my friend, Leo. Oh, I get so nervous for Leo. Let me tell you why. Because last summer, we had a short-term mission team that comes. And I love when short-term mission teams come. I hope someday you guys can come. And when you come, one of the things we do is we go out on the street and we tell people about Jesus. And sometimes we do like prayer walks and sometimes we do like talk to me in English signs. And sometimes we do this thing called a treasure hunt where you listen to Holy Spirit and he gives you, he gives you clues and then you go find somebody and say, you're the treasure. And then you try to tell them about Jesus. Well, anyway, we were out on the street and, and we, were t- we were trying to tell people about Jesus. But you know, sometimes like uh, you might have some friends like this and I apologize if you're one of those friends who is like this. But you know, some of those people who are like really strong on the gospel message, like right away, like the ones that hold the signs and say like, you're going to hell if you don't believe in Jesus. Do you know anybody like that? If you do that and God told you to do it, that is amazing. And there's nothing against that. But honestly, it made me a little nervous because I think, well, you guys get to go home in three weeks and then I have to clean up all your mess. So I was a little bit nervous and he, he wasn't holding a sign that said that, but, and, and that's a true message. I don't want to deny that. Okay. It's, it's in here. Okay. There's also a time for everything under the sun. So we just have to have discernment another message. But, but so he, this guy that came on the short-term team, he was like so passionate for Jesus. And he wanted to tell everybody about Jesus. And he was so strong on it right away. And it made me nervous. And then we met this guy named Leo out on the street. And Leo, he's just not the typical, I want to believe in Jesus kind of person. And there's a lot of stuff I could get into, but there's some reasons why he would be very definitely opposed to what some people think Christianity is all about. Okay, so you can fill in the blanks on that yourself, but just imagine someone who probably is like the last option to, to believe Jesus. Okay, and Leo's kind of like in that corner. And then this, this person comes up to him and he's like, you need to believe in Jesus. And I was so nervous because I was like, oh man, there goes, see you later, Leo, bye. And, but Leo, he, he stuck to this guy and they became friends. And Leo started coming and hanging around and started even volunteering. He, made, he started making breakfast for church services. He's not even a Christian yet. He said, oh, can I come early and like make you guys a three-course meal? I was like, oh, come on, bro. Come on over. I'd love to eat, clearly. Uh, he, so he comes and he's like coming to church on Sunday and he, he's now a part-time barista in our staff, but he's not a Christian yet. And so I love the story of Leo because he, he, like the seeds were so clearly sown and now he's letting us start to pray for him together. And he's starting to start to hear a little bit more about Jesus. And I believe, I'm trusting, I'm waiting, I'm expecting patiently that Leo is gonna come to know Jesus. And I'm so excited for that day because there's a bunch more Leos out there, a bunch of people. And you probably know a Leo. Maybe his name is not Leo. Maybe her name is not Leah. But whatever their name is, you know them and you're in their life for a reason and you sow the seeds and then you pray expectantly. God, move in Leo's life in Jesus' name. 
But there's one more point that jumps out at me when I look at this. And Jesus with us face to face, mouth to mouth, knee to knee. He's just close and intimate with us. And Jesus is saying, hey, I've got one more thing for you to see. He plants the seed. He's waiting patiently. He knows that a harvest is coming, even though he doesn't understand all the details. He doesn't know the formula or how the chemistry works, but he he knows expectantly that something is going to happen. And we know expectantly that our God answers our prayers. But then what's the third step? When the time has come, this little tiny seed that we planted, it grows up and it has some beautiful leaves. And then there's this grain that starts to come on the edge. And then there is harvest time. It's harvest time. And so what does he do? He goes and he takes the sickle. He's got this cool looking knifey thing and he cuts it right off. And harvest time is here. Everybody, let's eat. It's time. It's what Jesus invites us to do, to harvest faithfully. That's the invitation. Not just to sow abundantly or pray expectantly, but to harvest faithfully. And I have to tell you guys the truth that sometimes we don't always get it right. You ever feel like maybe you don't always get it right? I can tell you at least one story that I'm going to right now about how I did not get it right. So last year we started this coaching program, language coaching. It's so fashion, okay, so cool. And we're gonna be like language coaches and we're gonna tell you about how to learn language so that you can teach yourself and then you're not gonna need to go to cram school anymore or need to pay lots of money. And while we're doing this program, we also want to meet people and we wanna share, build a relationship with them and tell them about Jesus. And so we started this program and, and we did this event where we invited a bunch of other kinds of coaches. And then I was also doing a table for language coaching. And so at this event, people were walking around and they were coming to the tables. And, and this one young lady came to my table. And I happen to know that her sister is a Christian, but she is not. And I also happen to know that most of their family believes in this super weird cult. Okay, so I was a little bit nervous, but she came to my table. And as she was sitting down, I felt like Holy Spirit said, something that is preventing her from learning language like she wants to is actually her relationship with her mother. That's kind of weird. You don't normally start with that. Okay, but we're sitting down and I'm, and I'm sharing with her a little bit about our program and, and asking her some questions. And then I just blurted out, how's your relationship with your mom? And... She looked at me for a second and then she just started crying. And God was working. Holy Spirit had revealed to me in that moment what was going on and God was working in her heart and it was so, so beautiful. So she's like, what do I do? And because it's this coaching program, she expects me to sell her this product, okay? To sell her this coaching product. Oh, I wanna tell you guys that I, um, I got her sold the product and I got her saved and we dunked some water on her head and baptized her. But none of that happened. None of it happened. You know what I did? I told her that she could go on the website after she got home. Isn't that terrible? You're like, oh, unbelievable. Also terrible salesman, also a really bad missionary. Okay, I'm just being honest with you guys. That's what happened. I, she was like right there. And you know, I don't know what would have happened if I had sowed the seed, if I had gotten there, but she was like ready. She was like so ready to hear this about Jesus. And I avoided that. I avoided it. And I missed that chance to, to bring in the harvest. Say, girl, God loves you so much. And Jesus wants to restore that relationship with you and your mom. And yeah, it might mean that you learn some English and that you do well in the test that you're getting ready for. But more importantly than that is your whole life's going to be changed. And I didn't do any of that. I just directed her to the website. And I feel like I so missed that beautiful opportunity that God had given me. And in that moment, I realized I I didn't harvest faithfully. And because there's a million other people, literally in Taipei, between the ages of 20 and 40, our, our target demographic of people we're trying to reach out to through this and other programs, there's more than a million people that meet that demographic. There's a million more of her waiting out there, waiting for people who will actually bring the sickle to the wheat that will actually bring in the harvest. We're called to harvest faithfully. I tell you that story because maybe you feel today that there was a chance that you missed. And I I just don't want you to leave here today thinking that you need to continue to carry that because there's something more for you on the other side. Today, there's a freedom that we can come into so that we can be people who sow abundantly and pray expectantly and harvest faithfully. And when that time comes and when she asks you, what can I do next? You'll know because you'll be 
freely integrating your life with Holy Spirit, you'll be able to come into that place where you hear his voice and you respond to it. The good news is that that's not the only story of harvesting in Taiwan, praise Jesus. Let's go to the next slide. I got to tell you a couple stories about my friends. The first one is my friend, Jonathan. <clears throat> Jonathan, we've known him for five years. So just put that into perspective. Some of these relationships will take a long time. Some of you will be praying your entire life for someone. Pray expectantly. Don't give up the prayer. My friend, Jonathan, we've known him for five years. And just last year, he finally said, I want to become a Christian and I want to get baptized. And two days before we got on the airplane to fly back to the States, this is near the end of May, he came to my, he came to my house and he said, let's take a picture together. And I took the picture and it was so good. And then he said, no, 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 you got it wrong. It's the wrong angle. I said, oh, this guy, you Instagram people with your good angles. Okay, so let's take another angle. But he said, no, no, no. It's not just because my face looks better on this side or that side. It's because I want, you might not be able to see it because the picture's kind of small, but way in the back, there's a word. Can anybody read that on the slide? Way in the back, it says faith. He said, when I put this on Instagram, I want to be able to let people know, like, I have faith now. I have faith and I want people to know. I want them to be able to see that sign. And then the day before or the day of when we were getting on the airplane to fly back to Taiwan, he sent me this text message. And excuse the English, he's still working on it. You can tell those people at those churches in America, I'm gonna add a little context for you. I told him I was gonna go share with people like you. He said, tell those people there's a boy fighting and chasing after his desires. And, after he, and he followed Jesus after five years. Even though he's still struggling and fighting uncertainties, he smiles more and more and has more confidence. Every time when he's in the valley, he feels Jesus' love and has the courage to get up and keep moving. Finally, he serves in Aroma and he's going to go the next season with this church. What's so special about this to me is that Jonathan, like many, many people his age, he's just really looking for a girlfriend. He really wants to be in a relationship. And it seems like all the relationships just aren't working out for him. And it's really frustrating. And he's like, ah, and then he gets down in that valley. And he's like, ah, so depressed and frustrated. But then he sent this message as a reminder to me and a reminder to him and a reminder to us that when we harvest faithfully, God is moving in those people's lives. And he started it, Philippians 1.6 says, he's gonna bring it to completion. He is faithful. He's the one who's carrying the burden, not me. So when I messed it up with that girl in the coaching program thing, or when I messed it up, or tomorrow, maybe if I mess it up, or tomorrow, maybe if you mess it up, he's faithful. He's gonna go beyond that. He's gonna take us further than that. And the second story to share is my friend, is my friend Kate. Oh, it's so awesome. Kate uh, was born in China, and then her family fled to Hong Kong, and then she grew up in Hong Kong, and then she moved from Hong Kong to Taiwan to go to university. And my friend Emily, who's also in the picture there, Emily uh, met her, she was also going to university, and Emily and Kate became good friends. And then Kate started coming to our house because during the pandemic, Emily was living with us. And so we had this like fun time where we'd come over and eat pizza and just hang out. And Kate started hearing about the message and, and, and different amazing things happened. At the beginning of our time with her, it was honestly a little bit nerve wracking because there's some words that she uses, like four letter words that start with the letter F. And I don't really teach my kids those words. And so we were kind of like, how do we work with this? You know, and some of the clothes that she wore sometimes, I was like, okay, my boys, you know, my boys are boys. And, um, and so we were kind of like a little bit nervous about some of that stuff, but she came into our life and it was so amazing. And Kate is like, she's just such a special friend and our family's gotten so close to her. And then last year she said, I want to get baptized. And so we got to like baptize her in the ocean last year. So this is Kate and Emily and myself. We, got, we baptized Kate last year and she's growing in her faith. The harvest was ready at that moment. And we came and we got the harvest. And that's really cool. And I just love that story of Kate and Jonathan. And then there's my friend, Anne, who was already a Christian. She's the only Christian in her family. She is living in Chicago and she came and she spent 10 days with us. And her purpose was to just discover God's desire for her life. And she left our time in aroma saying, I believe God is calling me to open a gospel cafe somewhere else. Now, I don't know where it's going to be. I don't know when it's going to be. She's still hanging out in Chicago, having a good job and, and trying to minister to her family. But what I think is so cool is that she's someone who's getting ready to go to the harvest. But in our lives, wherever we work, whatever we're doing, wherever we go, there's a harvest. You say four months and then the harvest, Jesus says in John chapter four. But I say, this is Jesus talking, look up because the harvest is now. Jesus is inviting us 
to partner with him to see his harvest come about. So on the next slide, I got this for you. Sowing seeds and waiting with hope brings forth a bountiful harvest later. Now, we don't know when that harvest is going to be. There's people in your life. You don't know when it's going to come. You don't know how it's going to come. You're like that guy who sowed the seeds. He goes to sleep at night and he doesn't know how it's happening, but it does happen. Sowing seeds and waiting with hope brings forth a bountiful harvest later. On the next slide, you guys already know this, but I just want to reiterate it right now. It's important to see this. This is not just about me telling you some stories in Taiwan that we can clap and cheer for. I don't care about that. Well, I do care about that. But what I care more about is you today seeing that you are the aroma of Christ. And it's your opportunity to get up, get out of here, and go to the place where God has called you to be, wherever that might be. And as you're going, to make disciples. So you can so abundantly pray expectantly and harvest faithfully. So on the next slide, I want to show you this. By sowing and waiting together, we will see a harvest. On the left side, you can see me and my friends at our English outreach called Coffee Talk hanging out. Most of them don't know Jesus. Some people that come to Coffee Talk never even heard of Jesus before. And we have the chance to share with them. Every Friday, 30 to 50 people show up in our coffee shop and hang out with us. And there's more at other events that we do. But by sowing and waiting together, They'll become like this on the other side. Many of those people in that picture that are part of our church community came to know Jesus through the coffee shop church called Aroma. And now they're serving and loving him and they're going out and spreading the aroma to other places. Like our friend Andrew, who's associate pastor in the church right now, young 28-year-old Taiwanese guy. And like Angela, who's managing our coffee shop. These are people who God met with the message. The seeds were sown when he was a translator for a short-term mission team. He wasn't even a Christian yet. And then he had to tell people about Jesus. It was so hilarious. God is funny. Okay, And then like Angela, who just came in for a part-time job. And then at the end of that time, she's getting baptized. She's coming to follow Jesus and she's going to get extra training to learn how to serve Jesus and how to minister to people in supernatural, powerful ways. I love it. I love what God is doing in Aroma. And I love that we will see the harvest together. My last slide, and then I wanna invite the worship team to come up for our response time. You guys can start coming up now. Is that we need to go now to the harvest. We need to go now to the harvest. And I just know, I just sense that there is an urgency in the heart of God. Not, not the urgency that's like, if you don't do it, the world is gonna fall apart because God's way more faithful and amazing than that. But the urgency of the gospel is that there are people who need to know him. In Taiwan, for me, it's this magical, terrible number. Every day, 446 people pass away in Taiwan. That's the average. And 432 of those people didn't know Jesus. That's the statistic. 432 people every day die not knowing Jesus. And that number is terrible. And we're working to change that number. I don't know what the numbers are here, but I know that there's one person that you know in your life that doesn't know Jesus yet. There's one person who doesn't know him. There's one person like we were praying earlier today before we started the service. There's one person who ran away from God and you're their one connection back into the family of God. There's one person in your family, at your job, in your school, on the street, there's one person and God's calling us to go now to the harvest. And for us here, for us here in New Vine, and for us here in Aroma in Taipei, Taiwan, the harvest is plentiful. <laughs> the harvest is plentiful. And let's keep praying that God will continue to send you and I out to the harvest that God has called us to. But I have to be honest with you, we can't do it without partnership with people like you. Our, our ministry is fueled both in prayer and financially and even with volunteers by people like you. And so it, I know the QR code stopped working. I'm sorry about that. But our our commitment is to continue to go now to the harvest in Taiwan. And we want to invite you to join with us in that. So if you sent an email earlier, I'll be following up with you. But I want you right now as we do our response time to just answer this one question. Answer this one question. Who is one person? Who is one person that I can pray for? Who is one person who I can sow a seed to? Is there one person, God, in my life? The harvest is already there. And you're just waiting for me to show up and to bring the harvest home. God wants the treasure back in the treasure chest. That's Luke 15. He wants the prodigal's home. Again, Luke 15. Our God desires that everyone would know him. And he's inviting you and I to partner with him. So let's respond. Jesus, even as we close this evening, Father, we ask, Lord, even as your word has come upon us. Father, may our prayer, Lord, 
be for all of the name of Jesus, the knowledge of Jesus, be for all the world. But Father, we know, God, that it also starts here locally. Father, we ask, God, that you would remind us, Lord, that you have given us abundant seeds to sow. God, that you would show us to sow those seeds generously to those around us, to our neighbors, to our co-workers, to our family members, to those around us, God. Father, that you would remind us to also pray expectantly, to pray in faith for that one person, to never give up, Lord, to be persistent, to have eyes of faith to see from your perspective. But God, that we would also be faithful because the harvest is now, that you would give us that harvest right now and that we would harvest faithfully. Father, would you open our eyes to see the harvest before us and that you would allow us to harvest well. Father, we thank you for our dear brother Chris and Jamie and his four boys. Lord, they're four boys. Father, we pray, God, that even as they are here in the U.S., Lord, sharing what you are doing in Taiwan. Father, that you would continue to work in their lives, Lord, that even as they go back to Taiwan in a few months, Lord, that you would continue to use Aroma Cafe, that you would use Aroma Church, that you would use their team, Lord, to fulfill the call that you have placed upon them. Lord, you fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit as they faithfully sow, as they pray, as they harvest, Lord, all that you have called them to do. So, Chris, we bless you in the name of Jesus that the Lord of the harvest would provide more workers for your heart, for the harvest field, and that as you faithfully follow Jesus in Taiwan, that his name would be declared, that many more Taiwanese people will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus and that the Lord will be raising up an army of Taiwanese, an army of the people of Taiwan to declare your gospel, not just in the country of Taiwan, but to the ends of the earth. So we bless you in faith. We bless you to walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that Jesus would go before you that he would be your rear guard, that there would be nothing too difficult for him, even as he has given you this dream, this vision for the nation of Taiwan, that God would continue to supply all that you need for the furtherance of his kingdom, for his gospel purpose. So we bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus for your son today that has shared your word so powerfully among us. And we ask, God, that you would help us to respond as well, that we would respond in faith and that we would have a team that would go out to Taiwan, that we would have a team partnering with, partnering with Aroma Cafe and Aroma Church, and that we would see firsthand what you are doing there as well. Thank you, Jesus, for your invitation to us. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. You, we praise you. We just ask, Lord, that you would continue to go before us, even as we go upstairs, even as we share a meal together, even as we dismiss. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen.